Hey everyone, Mr. Sugeno here. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to mod the SNES Classic. Let's get started. I could have posted this video earlier. However, I decided on doing it a little later just because I was waiting for a stable version of Hackchi for the SNES Classic. I didn't wanna be one of the early adopters and potentially face issues like breaking your system. I'll leave a link in the description on where to get Hackchi. Uh, basically, Hackchi is the program that you can use to install on your SNES Mini in order to add additional games. At the time of this video, it is version 2.30. So there are different versions you can click to download. I just recommend the very first one here. So it's Hackchi 2.30.zip at a whopping 15.4 megabytes. So it's not very big at all. Once you've downloaded Hackchi, feel free to extract it. First time users may run into this installation window. It says .NET Framework 3.5 requires .NET 2.0 and 3.0. So if you don't have this, you may need to install it. You might be able to get away with it, but for safety's sake, just feel free to install it. Once Hackchi is up and running, you have options on the screen. So it says here, before we start, please select your console. You can change it later using the settings menu if you want to use another console. So there's the NES. Famicom, SNES, and Super Famicom. So for the purposes of this video, I have the SNES, the USA or Europe version. Next, you're greeted with a nice little message. Hello, hello there. I'm very glad you're using Hackchi 2. It's very simple to use. Just click add more games, select some ROMs, press synchronize, and follow the instructions. Good luck. To dump your kernel, head over into the kernel menu, then click dump kernel. It says, do you want to dump the kernel? Select yes. This screen will now have the following steps. One, make sure the power button on your NES slash SNES mini is switched off. Two, reconnect your NES slash SNES mini to the PC via USB cable. Three, hold the reset button and turn on the power switch. Four, after a few seconds, release the reset button and the power LED should not be on. Five, install driver if it's not installed yet. So the next part, I will click install driver. So here is the screen that it brings up. I'm now gonna press enter. And now it says dumping kernel. So it's taking the kernel off my SNES Classic just in case something is to go wrong. I can now restore it and I don't have to worry about it. There's also a handy little message here. Your original kernel is saved in the hackchi2 slash dump folder. Do not lose it. This is optional, but highly recommended. And this is RetroArch for the SNES Classic. You can get away with installing Hackchi 2 and just leave it at that. However, I would highly recommend installing RetroArch as well, uh, just due to the fact that some of the SNES games do not run very well on the SNES Classic. Therefore, you can use the RetroArch emulator and they'll run better. Also, there's the added benefit of playing additional games on the SNES Classic that aren't made for the SNES. For example, Sega Genesis you can play. You can also play Game Boy Advance and a slew of other games. To download RetroArch, there are a few files available. I will leave a link to this in the description below. The file you want is RetroArch with cores, and it is 13.3 megabytes. Once RetroArch is downloaded, uh, feel free to drag and drop it into the open instance of HackG2. A window will pop up and there are pre-selected emulators and files that you can install. For advanced users, feel free to configure this to your heart's content. If you are a novice user, I just recommend leaving the check marks as is. Now here are the steps. Make sure the power button on your NES slash SNES mini is switched off. Reconnect your SNES slash SNES mini to the PC via USB cable. Hold the reset button and turn on the power switch. After a few seconds, release the reset button and the power LED should not be on. And lastly, install driver if it's not installed yet. So if you've not installed the driver, click on install driver after you've done those four steps. This is the part where I recommend not touching anything. Let the program do its work. It takes some time, be patient. I don't recommend multitasking on your computer either. If this does freeze by any chance, you may break your system. So leave everything as is. So when this finishes, you'll be greeted with a nice, 
Wow, done screen. Um, just click OK, and now you can add your games. So in regards to adding games, since RetroArch is on this, I can add non-SNES games. I'm gonna be adding three games here, Clue, Monopoly, and Risk. I will acknowledge that these are not blockbuster games, but I've got a RetroPie for that. So these are just a few extra multiplayer games that I wish was on the SNES Classic. Uh, Clue and Monopoly are a lot of fun, and Risk, which is a Genesis game. So it's a simple drag and drop onto Hakchi here. And if you do notice, there is no box art for these games. There's a very easy way to do that. Highlight the games, right click, and select download box art for the selected games. So alternatively, if this does not return the box art you're looking for, you can manually change it as well. So if you take a look at Clue, I'm happy with that box art. Monopoly, I'm happy with that box art. And Risk, I'm also happy with that box art. If I wanted to change it, I could just click Google and it'll bring up a bunch of different artwork that I can choose. Obviously, none that really suit this game better than the one it pre-selected. Alternatively, you can also click Browse and upload a custom image. In this menu, you can also change the name of the game. So if you wanted to for some reason, if it didn't come up properly, uh, you can just change it and edit it right here. Also, you can see that it shows max players. So you can click on whatever you would like. It doesn't really matter in this area. Uh, I tried it with one player and it still allows you to use two players. It's just for the informational purposes when it shows it on the screen. If you are having trouble running a SNES game that you placed on the SNES Classic, this is where the retro arch bit comes in. So all you have to do is go over to the game you're having trouble with, go to the command line, and at the very end of the command line, press space, dash, dash, and type in retro arch. And what this does is this forces the SNES Classic to use the retro arch emulator and hopefully get your game running. All that's left is to synchronize these games with the SNES Mini. All you have to do is click this button down here, synchronize selected games with NES slash SNES Mini, and it'll sync and you're good to go. Now, it may ask you to flash a custom kernel at this point. It's an automatic process. Don't worry, select yes, let it do its thing, and then you're done. And that's about it. Now you can disconnect your SNES Classic, hook it up to your TV, and you're off to the races. You can add more games later, you can take away games later, it's really up to you and what you want to put on it. In terms of emulating other systems, I highly recommend using RetroPie instead on a Raspberry Pi. This by no means replaces the RetroPie and Raspberry Pi. I would say it complements it to an extent. This is not as powerful as the Raspberry Pi. Um, it, it's more of a novelty thing. So if you've got the SNES Classic and want to mod it, by all means. However, if you're looking for more advanced emulation, then pick up a retro pie. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you everyone. Take care.